many thanks to both uh, you and Pavlos, uh, Alex, because you've uh, actually managed to address most of the questions already uh, asked. Um, Bernard, perhaps you could help us with a question on uh, the depreciation of equipment. Uh, there is a question from uh, Pedro Merino on how should we manage depreciation of equipment if purchased uh, in the cascade funding? And is this 100% covered? To my knowledge, it is. I mean, this is a very specific question, so um, I think we should maybe take it offline and uh, put it in the facts. But uh, normally, uh, the, the equipments are reimbursed 100 percent of, of the direct cost. So I don't have any particular uh, comment on that one. I would have to check that further. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Um, again, something uh, regarding small municipalities, there seems to be some interest in regards to financing for small municipalities. Uh, the question is, uh, is there is this possible because um, they mentioned that small municipalities often do not have large budget to co-finance like less than 100 K. If you have a we, we we have um, already at call one uh, we have a number of municipalities participating in the uh, in the pro in the project so uh, they should be uh, reimbursed as uh, non-profit making uh, entities so the rules applying to uh, non-profit making entities will apply to this uh, to this type of uh, partners so uh, this is something that uh, is no it, it doesn't normally cause any uh, particular uh, particular problem, so non-profit making should be eligible for 100% reimbursement. Sounds good. Um, there is another quite specific question, but perhaps you'd like to comment on it. Uh, in regards for the pilots uh, streams, uh, there is a question uh, from a specific partner, and they, may, they mentioned they have a small network of fiber plus wireless uh, in a rural area where they use for commercial and R&D services. And the question is, is that eligible for to take part in a proposal or is it considered too small? I mean, uh, it's typically the kind of questions that we cannot answer from a generic perspective. Uh, you have to put it in the context of the proposal. And if the proposal which is put on the table has a number of objectives that corresponds to the uh, objective and scope uh, of the open call and that uh, this particular platform contributes to this objective that is no showstopper i mean they can absolutely uh, participate uh, they have to find the partners which will uh, find uh, the interest to accommodate uh, this this uh, this uh, this platform but from the from the eligibility point of view there is no showstopper uh, again if they uh, find a number of uh, matching partners that uh, are interested in their platforms and they want to use it in the context of a pilot or a test bed we have nothing to say on that okay thank you so much bernard there are a couple more questions that just came in so um a question from I, I, uh, Vol from volker about stream b0105 uh, which is very much focused on radio front ends and the comment is that europe uh, is strong in optical industry and the invisible light communication considered in stream uh, B0103 depends strongly on the availability of specific optical components such as laser and photodiode arrays, uh, which need further development. Yes. And the question is, would a proposal going into this direction be appropriate? I mean, you have to... We have nothing, again, we are a bit, I wouldn't say we are technology neutral because this is one of the regulatory uh, type of notion which does not necessarily apply to uh, to our RNI program, but uh, you have to understand the logic behind the microelectronics uh, type, of, uh, type of story. The logic behind the microelectronics is to say, we need to involve the microelectronics industry very early in the process to be ready to participate in the standardization race when it opens in 2025 or 2026 with the right level of uh, uh, knowledge from the uh, microelectronics capabilities of what 6G will represent in, uh, uh, in, in Europe. So if you believe that uh, your technology, irrespective of the fact that it's based on uh, photons or on electrons, if you believe that your technology is something that can contribute to the advent of 6G 
and that can cover the requirements. I don't know if you can think of, uh, you talk about optical, you can think of uh, an optical beam former for a, a kind of uh, active antenna. Uh, that would be a domain where uh, photonics uh, will, will play a role and active antennas will probably play a role in uh, 6G. So uh, here, go ahead. I mean, there is no, the, again, there is no showstopper, but you have to check that the technology can contribute to something that as a system will have a chance of being standardized uh, at the level of uh, 6G and which will contribute to a potential positioning of European industry in the standardization debates. That, that, that's the logic right. of the... Otherwise, if it's just to develop microelectronics industry, uh, microelectronics components uh, for the sake of pushing the technology for microelectronics, KDT is designed for that. So here you will have the full the full scale of um, microelectronics capabilities, from uh, the very the very de early design of the components up to the the, the implementation, the, the packaging, everything. Okay, thank you very much, Bernard. Um, there is one more question on whether uh, joint CG and Wi-Fi solutions can be considered and submitted as part of this call. Again, there is no showstopper. Why not? If you believe that it's what, if you if you uh, believe that uh, integration of uh, Wi-Fi uh, and uh, and the cellular technologies is uh, one direction to go, which seems to be, and I suppose that the stakeholders uh, which are active in this field, uh, they will uh, kind of, or at least some of them will support that, taking into account that the the, the five G uh, standards that we have today normally they uh, already uh, are open to uh, kind of uh, integration of uh, Wi Fi with uh, cellular network. This is something which is already in the in the three GPP standards today. So this is a domain that potentially uh, is useful for the future. So uh, no, there is no, we have no. Uh, no contradiction about it. We are not, again, we are not, uh, when we talk about CG, we are not thinking of uh, cellular only because we are uh, also supporting NTN, which are not exactly cellular, specific type of cellular networks, but it's not exactly a cellular networks in the traditional, in the traditional sense. So we don't, uh, we don't um, uh, limit ourselves to pure uh, cellular stuff. It could also include, if you so wish, uh, as part of CG, as we see it now uh, with initiatives like uh, TIP, uh, it could include also convergence with fixed networks. I mean, that's not, uh, that's not um, kind of precluded by the context. It's not necessarily incentivized, but it's not, it's not precluded. Many thanks. And since you mentioned the uh, 3GPP standards, it's a related question. So in stream B0101, um, end user devices and IoT technologies are mentioned. The question is whether non-3GPP wireless link technologies are in scope. Again, um... I cannot say this is in scope. This is not. This is uh, not in scope. It has to make sure that uh, this is relevant to the overall uh, 6G discussion. So, if you believe that uh, within the 6G vision, which is being discussed now uh, across uh, a large number of uh, forums, for which uh, the 5G PPP uh, has put forward a dedicated uh, document. Uh, for which we have uh, documents available from uh, from the US, from uh, Asia, from uh, all the regions. If you believe that uh, within the um, uh, the vision which is likely to emerge uh, for 6G, because even if the proposals are to be submitted before uh, before June, the, the moment when we have the ITU 6G vision, there are already so many contributions that. Uh, all the stakeholders in this domain know what the, uh, the vision will be, or they have a good guess of what the vision will be. So if you believe that your technology fits within this vision in terms of service provision, capability provisions, uh, sustainability issues, and uh, all the ancillary things that go with it, uh, you, can, you are free to, uh, to propose something that goes in that direction. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I think we have time for one uh, more. Um, the question was whether you can comment on the type of energy impact that is expected in stream B0101. 
Mm, I, I encourage you to read the, the exact uh, deliverables on that. Uh, we have uh, in our program uh, two type of uh, energy uh, efficiency uh, type of uh, type of approaches. One is uh, sustainability for uh, for the for the network itself, and the other one is the network for sustainability. What it means is that we try to incentivize technologies that can reduce the carbon footprint of um, uh, of um, te telecom platforms. I mean, telecom platforms in the wider sense, uh, including uh, cloud implementation, if uh, part of it has to be implemented in uh, in cloud platforms. Uh, so that's part of the equation. This is a subject which is uh, under heavy debate because uh, it's not necessarily sure that uh, we can have a huge amount of gains in that uh, in that domains. And we have today projects like uh, Ray India, for instance, which is looking into this. Uh, we have uh, Exax, which has uh, shown that uh, the main sustainability uh, impact you can make is not necessarily in the platform itself, but in the use case which are running on top of the platforms. So the two issues uh, are open. So either we can reduce the uh, amount of energy and the carbon footprint that is generated by the platform itself, which will mean uh, go into some further reduction in the uh, uh, energy per bit, uh, which uh, you need to uh, convey uh, the data or uh, other metrics which have to be uh, to be defined. Or something which seems to be also very promising, or even more promising, is how you can help the use cases which are running on top of a platform to decrease their carbon footprint. For instance, you can think of uh, if uh, cars, uh, if traffic is fully automated uh, with connected cars which have some intelligence, you can save a huge amount of fuel or of electricity once we have all moved to expensive electric cars. Um, so that's also another type of metric that we are uh, interested uh, interested in. Okay, uh, many thanks, Bernard. I think we've managed to answer all the questions. The rest of them should be answered on uh, in the chat. And I think this is pretty nice timing, Alex, for yeah. you to take the floor back. And just maybe, j just maybe one more one more side because I I wanted to do it but I didn't do it for <laughs> I forgot to do it in my presentation for the the, the question of the. UK participants, because I know that we have a lot of uh, very good institutes in UK, and it would be really a pity if we cannot have them uh, contributing to this uh, to this program. So, um, the, um, what we expect is that uh, the UK government will extend the rule, which at this moment in time stops uh, at the level of proposals submitted to Horizon Europe in uh, before the 31st of March. So after the 31st of March, there is no guaranteed uh, coverage uh, from the UK government from what we understand. But we understand also that this is in discussion in UK and this will probably be extended, So which is what we hope. So if the guarantee of the UK government is extended, uh, assuming that they don't sign the uh, association agreement because this seems to be uh, delayed now i don't know why but uh, if they sign the association agreement it's uh, it's no problem the the uk participant uh, they put the budget that they want in the proposal and they are paid uh, from the uh, proposal's budget uh, that's the normal uh, way if they extend the guarantee uh, what it means is that uh, they do exactly like we, like we did at call one they put the budget they need in the uh, in the proposal, uh, but uh, when time comes to implement the contract, if they are successful, uh, we ask them to revert to the UK guarantee to get funded, and uh, we uh, commission side we fund uh, zero. Uh, but they get funded uh, from the UK uh, government on the basis of the cost that they have submitted. Now, if the UK government does not extend the guarantee, uh, then we have a problem. Uh, these these uh, notions you will find in the facts. Uh, it's, it's explained in the frequently asked questions, and it makes reference to the uh, UK to the government of the to the sorry to the announcement of the UK government that talks about uh, these uh, guarantee extensions. But for the moment, we have no formal uh, information that the guarantee is going to be extended beyond the 31st of March. Thank you very much, Bernard. This is extremely uh, helpful.